Continuing our series on vintage pieces of test equipment, this is a Precision Model E200C RF signal generator. This was a very popular service grade generator and was made from around 1940 up until the 1960s in some form or another. They underwent some cosmetic changes as well as some circuit changes, but the basic concept was still the same. Sometime in the mid-60s, uh, B&K bought out Precision, and shortly thereafter they introduced the Model E200D signal generator that was a solid-state version of this one, although it looked a lot different, but there again the concept is still the same. I believe this model was made in 1949 according to some date codes that I found, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, here are our RF output jacks and our RF level controls here. And here's our band selector switch to select which tuning band that you're on. Here's our modulation control which essentially varies the degree of audio modulation. This is a power supply here, 0 to 50 volts. And its main purpose was so that the uh, service technician could uh, cut the AVC line inside of a radio under alignment and use this AVC voltage here which is variable from 0 to 50 volts to substitute for the set's AVC voltage. Now Precision claimed that this made alignment more accurate, but I'm really not sold on the idea. I think that was just a marketing gimmick to sort of give Precision a, a lead on the rest of the competition that was out there. And here's our selector switch. We have unmodulated RF output which means simply an RF carrier with no audio signal writing on it modulated RF output external modulation that's where you can feed an external audio source into the signal generator and that audio source will ride on the RF carrier and 400 cycle audio which is available at these jacks right here. The purpose for that is basically just to have a test tone to test the audio section in a radio. This generator has an output frequency coverage from around 80 kilocycles up to around 30 megacycles on fundamental frequencies and from there up to 120 megacycles on harmonics. Here's the inside of the generator. As you can see, it's a three-tube unit. We have a 6SJ7 here for the RF oscillator. And of course, this is the RF assembly that contains the coils necessary to produce an RF frequency. And these are your tremor capacitors. Their purpose is for calibrating each band so that the frequency output of the generator matches what's read on the front control dial here. And here's our variable tuning capacitor. When used in conjunction with these coils, you get the proper RF output frequency. And here's our audio oscillator or modulator tube, which is a 6C5. And here's our rectifier tube, which is a 5Y3. I think earlier versions of this generator used a, a Type 80 rectifier tube. And as you can see, I've replaced the capacitors. There are a couple of capacitors that I replaced on the RF assembly, as well as under the chassis here. These blue disc capacitors are the AC line bypass caps that connect from one side of the AC line to ground. It's really important that you use AC safety capacitors in this application. 
the originals were .01 microfarad, which I didn't have, so I had to place two .0047 microfarad caps in parallel to get me close to the right value. And there was one resistor here that was up in value, so I didn't have the exact value, so I used two resistors in series to get me close. Okay, let's fire this up and run the smoke test and see if it operates. And I did, of course, replace the original power cord. Okay, we're at, a, we're at our null point, and our calibration is just a slight bit off, which is no surprise. There's our null point. And we're just a little bit off, but more concerning, it appears that our internal modulation is not working very well. As you can hear, it's just barely coming through, so I think we need to investigate the uh, investigate that area of the circuit. Okay, back on the Precision E200C signal generator. I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with the audio oscillator circuit. It's basically non-existent when viewed on a scope. Turn the light off where we can see it. This is what we're getting. And we're set to uh, 0.2 volts per division. So yeah, that's a very small signal coming out of the signal generator. Now I'll hook up another signal generator and, and show you what it's supposed to look like. And here we are with the audio oscillator portion of another signal generator connected. And this is what we're now getting. Well, my scope is having a little bit of an issue here, but this looks more like what it's supposed to look like. We're now set on two volts per division, so this other signal generator is outputting a much stouter, cleaner waveform than what the precision signal generator is kicking out. And unfortunately, this is one of those situations where I've checked everything I know to check and can't find any reason for the problem. The audio oscillator section is obviously misbehaving, and I've replaced the original paper capacitors with the correct value capacitors in a more modern form, obviously. The only resistor that was bad was this 250k ohm resistor, which was originally a carbon composition resistor. And I replaced it with a carbon, with a film type resistor. I don't know if that might have any effect on it or not, but that's the only other thing I know to try. All the voltages seem correct. I've substituted a new tube. I've checked the switches and controls, nothing checks out of place, so why is the dadgum audio oscillator not behaving right? I've checked the uh, modulation transformer. Its windings appear to be good, although I suppose there could be a shorted turn or two causing a problem that's not showing up on the ohm meter. But I think for right now, since I'm just drawing at straws here, I'm going to replace this resistor with a carbon composition type, if I can locate one in my stash, and see if it makes a difference. Okay, I've now switched back to the original carbon composition style resistor. And we'll now give it another test run and see if the condition inc improves any. Okay, it seems that replacing those resistors with uh, the original carbon composition type helped tremendously 
as you can hear, we're getting modulation now that we were not getting before. And now we'll take a look at it on the scope. Although weaker than the other signal generator, we're on the two volt, volt per division range and and even though it is weaker than the other signal generator, it's stronger than it was before. And our waveform does look a little wonky. I'm going to try this new tube again and see if that makes any difference. Tapping on the old tube, it's obviously microphonic and you can see the waveform on the oscilloscope going bonkers. So let's try another tube and see what happens. Okay, installing another tube didn't help the situation any, so we'll go back to the original tube. And this may be as good as it gets here. Now we do have some sort of usable modulation that we didn't have before. So like I said, that may be as good as it's going to get. Okay, here we are looking at the unmodulated RF output. Now we have the modulation turned on. As you can see, there's something there now. But it's still not quite as strong as I think it ought to be. Okay, I think we're going to give this a rest for tonight while I sleep on what I might need to do, to do next to this. If anyone has any ideas, I'd love to hear from you. Our objective is to get this uh, audio oscillator working a little bit better. Okay, there you go, my Precision E200C signal generator. Thanks for watching, and part two should be coming up shortly.